It's hard to believe that it's been 20 years since Paper Mario was released for the N64 in North America. Despite receiving five sequels and a cult following, it somehow feels odd to acknowledge that this turn-based RPG now has two decades of history behind it. It feels like just yesterday I was exploring Toad Town and Peach's Castle for the first time, taking in this new world and meeting all the colorful visitors from around the Mushroom Kingdom. As I reflect on my memories of Paper Mario, it's hard to find a game that has made a bigger impact on me as a gamer. Paper Mario is a game I've completed countless times over these last two decades, and I've always wondered what it is that keeps bringing me and so many others back to this N64 classic. Sure, the combat is great, albeit a little on the easy side, and has plenty of depth because of the many varied enemies as well as the wonderful badge system. The story, while a little generic, is perfectly executed and extremely appropriate for the pop-up storybook style of the game. The music is diverse, tasteful, and befitting of a Mario title. You acquire a terrific mix of memorable partners, all which provide useful and fun abilities to use. And it's satisfying to see this huge cast of Mario characters reimagined and repurposed in many unique and creative ways. But what really defines Paper Mario, and what enhances and weaves all its positive attributes together, is the game's charm. Very few games come close to the amount of charm that is packed into Paper Mario. Whether it's witty dialogue NPCs will spout, or the comical animations throughout the experience, it feels like you're never going too long without finding something that will make you laugh or smile. In a way reminiscent of a Disney movie, Paper Mario is stuffed with many small details and references that add so much to the adventure when noticed or discovered. And a lot of times these aren't things that will change the gameplay as much as it will add to the overall tone and atmosphere the game is trying to create. A popular and well-known example of this is with Mario's brother Luigi who unfortunately is left at home to guard the brother's house while Mario is saving the day. You can visit him at the house throughout the adventure to discover him doing various activities, and when you talk to him, he may even comment on Mario's journey. While unfortunately you are not able to gain Luigi as a partner, you can find a new underground bunker he's created while you've been gone that houses his secret diary. In this diary are all sorts of goodies and references, such as him speaking of the good old days when everyone would get together for parties and golf, or learning of his fear of ghosts for the first time. One entry even reveals that Luigi is actually disgruntled that he's always left behind by Mario, even writing that he dreams of his own solo adventure one day. The Mario Bros. house also hosts Mario's mailbox, where he can read letters written to him by characters he's encountered during his time saving the Star Spirits. As with Luigi's Diary, these don't add much in the way of gameplay, but it's important world building that helps the Mushroom Kingdom and its citizens have more substance. And unlike Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, which has these letters pinged to Mario wherever he is in the game, the fact that they are discreetly placed in Mario's home keeps the letters as a nice surprise to stumble upon organically. Similarly, praise goes to the post office for having letters written to your partners by the various characters connected to them. It makes sense that Goombario's mom would write to her only son as he pals around with the famous Mario, or that Lackalulu would want to check up on her boyfriend Lackalester. It helps to flesh out your partner's backstories and personalities, as well as make the various NPCs in the game more memorable. Speaking of NPCs, how great is it that most names in Paper Mario are charming little puns of some kind? The chef of Toad Town, well, her name is Tasty. The toad found in the wintry Starborn Valley, his name is Frosty. And the scaredy cat guard of Forever Forest, he goes by Feisty. You've got Bootler, the Boo Butler of Lady Bo. Martial artist Chan and Lee in the dojo, Herringway, the penguin novelist, and the mole like creature found on Mount Rugged named Wacka. And even when the names aren't puns, you'll find hilariously generic names like this Bob Om in the Koopa Village named Bruce, or this Boo in Gusty Gulch randomly named Stanley. Though oftentimes in Paper Mario, even when you come across something that seems random, like the adventuring Koopa Colorado being named after a US state, it might just be because you're missing a reference. In this case, the treasure-obsessed Koopa is parodying Indiana Jones, who is also a fictional adventurer named after a US state. If you're paying attention though, you'll see that Paper Mario is actually filled with all kinds of references. They range from obvious examples like the Koopa Bros being a parody of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, to more subtle things like the train that connects Toad Town to Mount Rugged closely resembling the train in Calamari Desert from Mario Kart 64, to obscure references like the plot of Tubba Blubba's secret being taken from a Norwegian fairy tale. 
When you discover one of these many references, it just adds another layer of enjoyment to the game as it's fun to look and see what other cool easter eggs you can find. However, even when considering the elements discussed so far, it's really the shining humor of Paper Mario that makes playing it such an endearing experience. The writing in this game is lighthearted, pure, goofy, and ultimately praiseworthy. Scenes such as when Mario tricks the guard of Mount Rugged into believing you are actually Luigi, while maybe not laugh out loud funny, is so silly for how easily he's convinced that I can't help but crack a smile whenever I go through it. Sections such as exploring Jay Jungle with Colorado are highlighted by moments like his prank on Mario where he pretends to be in danger. And some of Peach's best segments of the game, like the 64th annual Quiz Off, show the power humor can have by bringing levity into what would have otherwise been a pretty tense situation. There's so much creativity in the writing as well, that one would only need to walk around tattling with Goombario to appreciate the effort and attention to detail the Paper Mario team put into this wonderful title. So many little quips are hidden through this feature that over time it has become one of my favorite things to tattle random people in areas in the game. Not only are you bound to eventually find a tattle that makes you laugh, but you can pick up some interesting info while you're at it. Similarly, talking to the various characters around Toad Town produces the same result. Not only will you potentially learn cool things like how Kent C. Koopa was more than likely the one who trained the Koopa Bros how to fight, but you get nuggets of charmful dialogue all over the place. A favorite example of mine is towards the end of the game, where this blue toad in Toad Town is in complete and utter disbelief that Mario or any sane person would attempt an assault on Bowser's castle, and he simply will not believe any of it. At the end of the day, on paper, a lot of the things that I've pointed out seem unimportant. None of the elements I've discussed so far by themselves have much of an impact on the overall quality of the game. Together, however, they create an atmosphere and world that is a joy to navigate through and a pleasure to explore. Truthfully, there are even more charming moments I haven't touched on throughout Paper Mario, but it'd start to get tiresome if I ran through them all. What's important is how these moments are executed and how they work together. It's why I feel charm defines Paper Mario, because the beauty of this game doesn't necessarily come from its content, but rather how that content is presented. In 2021, we've all seen and played through the story of Mario saving Peach from Bowser's castle numerous times, but Paper Mario is still enjoyable to replay because of how it tells that story. It takes the familiar and packages it in a way that feels fresh and new. It's like a cover of a great song. The general idea is the same as the original, but the notes take on their own identity, allowing a different perspective to shine through. Paper Mario pulls this off phenomenally through its humor, attention to detail, and willingness to own its identity. It is a game that deserves to be celebrated for expanding on the scope of the Mario universe without sacrificing the things that made Mario such a successful franchise to begin with. It's why when you sit back and reflect on the experience, you can't help be impressed by how many small memorable moments flood back to your mind. From rescuing shells from the fuzzies in the Koopa Village, to saving Yoshi kids on Lava Lava Island, to fending off scared star kids in Starborn Valley, all the way to Twink stepping up to battle Kami Koopa in the finale, Paper Mario delivers unique and engaging moments all the way to the very end. It's a game that has aged as well as any RPG I can think of, and it's a testament to the impact this game made on people that 20 years later, people still want a third Paper Mario installment in the style of the original. For my money, Paper Mario is one of the greatest games of all time, and one that feels as enjoyable to play in 2021 as it did in 2001. If you've never played this legendary N64 game, do yourself a favor and make it a goal in 2021, or whatever year you may be watching this, to play this outstanding title. And if we are all lucky, one day we may even get the remaster this game so obviously deserves so that new generations can appreciate its charm just as I was able to 20 years ago.